I would like to start the meeting on January 7th at 6.03. Thank you, Area 58, for filming. Anybody in the audience like to be acknowledged or scheduled at this time? We have uh, Lee. Really, Bob? <laughs> Are you in the audience tonight? <laughs> Um, we have the liaison from the finance committee here tonight, so maybe um, she did mention she needs to leave a little early to yep. go to um, her meeting across the street, so if we need to shuffle things around Absolutely. at some I, point. I did give her a full bud uh, budget packet, so she has exactly what we have. Good. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, minutes. Has, anybody, has everybody had a chance to go over the minutes from our last meeting on December 3rd? Very thorough. They're good, though. They're good. Um, the only thing that I was wondering is, so when Lisa, because Lisa submits them, correct? Her minutes? Yes. Lisa, okay. So Gordon had mentioned at the end noting the handouts, which yep. is done in these minutes, which yep. is great. Yep. So will she also be submitting the handouts with the minutes, or are they just there, or she can people can contact her and request them, the handouts, if they'd like them, or? I don't believe so, we so have. So technically, the way it is that you have to reference the items that were handed out, but those handouts aren't actually part of the minutes. So she at least has to keep a copy of them if somebody has to file for that meeting. <clears throat> okay. But technically the minutes are just the minutes from the meeting, not all the handouts as well. Okay, so this is correct in the minutes that they're listed here, but okay, so they just email Lisa and request them yeah, if they'd she, like a copy of them. Okay. Them. okay. Thank you for answering that. Um, vote to approve the minutes. I need a motion to vote to approve the minutes. Accept. Whatever. Motion to accept the minutes as printed. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Warrants are in front of me and we'll be circulating them. Um, correspondence and reports. The, oh, forgive me, I left it in my car. There was a small bill of some sort or a receipt in the box. I'll have to bring it to remind okay. me before you leave tonight. Um, obviously, it goes to you. It's in your car, you okay? Yeah, it's in my car. I left it on my front seat. And um, I just wanted to take a quick moment to just remind everybody what the process is when they have an issue in the classroom here. Um, what the proper channels to go through. So if any parent has any sort of issue with their child in the classroom, the first step is to notify the teacher, and um, if you don't feel like you've been sufficiently served or your issue has been resolved, then you go to the building principal, and um, they, or at any member of the administration, I'm assuming Brian also. Yes. Um, at that point, if you still don't feel satisfied with the resolution, you speak to the superintendent or assistant superintendent, <laughs> passing the buck. <laughs> and then, um, at that point, um, you obviously, the, the last step is to come to us at the school committee here. So I just kind of wanted to clarify those channels because sometimes people jump around a little bit and just want to remind everybody of what the proper process is. It's, so. it's in our handbook as well. Okay. Same, just outlines the process. Great. Great. Thank you. Other than that, I haven't received anything from anybody. Anybody else? Okay. Unfinished business? I don't have any. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll try not to laugh at you at all meeting. Uh, new business? I don't have any. Anyone else? Anyone like to see anything else other than the budget on the agenda for next month? <laughs> uh, the, only, <clears throat> the only thing that we talked about last uh, <clears throat> meeting was standing outside talking to the parents. Oh, pick up drop off. I did notice today that they're not using they're not three lined up in three. Now that it's is it done over there where they took all the trees down? And the recycled asphalt is there in the middle. Okay. So it's uh, we found that they, we're getting reports that it's pushed back out into the street, then we send out the troops to do that. Okay. So but we were gonna come in and talk with the parents and ask them why they're doing pick up and drop off. Mm -hmm. I heard from one parent, he said that his kids are on the bus uh, longer and there seems to be behavioral issues that come up as the kids are on the bus for a long period of time. So he said depending upon the route, uh, he would change, well, they would change their mind whether or not to do the drop off pick up to 
depending upon how long the kids are in the bus. Okay, which has been part of our discussion. So mm -hmm. we can talk about that maybe when it's not so freezing. No, 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 we should be out there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you look you pretty warm. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Packers hat, though. <laughs> All right, well, we can revisit that. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> um, report of standing committees. So policy, we did meet. Do you want to talk a little bit about it, Joy? Or? Sure. Um, so about twice a year, MASC, which is the Mass Association, Mass Massachusetts Association of School Committees, sorry about that, sends out a policy updates. And uh, we received a set in February and in July. And we reviewed and updated our policies based on their recommendations. We met with the subcommittee. Um, most of the changes were <clears throat> just based on civil rights language um, that in, we needed to add the words pregnancy or pregnancy related into several policies. So it was civil rights changes. Um, you have a packet here with the policies, if we had that policy already in our packet um, with the updates um, added in <coughs> red or in highlighted in yellow if it's a policy that is a change of one that we currently had. Um, so the policy subcommittee met, um, we reviewed the recommendations, um, and these are the um, recommendations that went through based on that subcommittee meeting. The only thing I did want to mention in here is the wellness policy. As part of the wellness policy, um, Jill coordinates the wellness subcommittee, um, and they recommended bringing forward some language that is recommended from the state um, <coughs> regarding any advertising of food things that are not on the approved list, the John Stalker list. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, members of the subcommittee had some concerns to make sure that our athletic director was aware of um, that list because we're talking about trying to put in a new billboard on our football field, on Serico field, the athletic field. Um, and some of the advertisers could be a company like Dunkin' Donuts, um, which is not an unusual company to support, but they would not be on that wellness committee list. So Jill will re reference that in her update. Um, so the subcommittee approved just an update and reread the wellness committee, but we didn't want to add that language yet um, until we get clarification from our athletic director because of the potential um, as a funding source. We want to make sure we make good decisions on that, if that all makes sense. So what you have here are the recommendations from the policy subcommittee um, with the changes highlighted. The process is um, you receive them. Um, if it's okay, usually what we do is we waive the actual reading because otherwise we literally have to read all of these. So you waive the actual reading of the policies and then you accept as a first reading the policies. Um, then what happens is you can go through, you can review these, you got these in uh, the mail, um, in the email. Um, and then if you have any questions or concerns, you can contact uh, Summers on the policy subcommittee, myself, Bob, I think. You were on that, weren't you? It's Alex. Alex, sorry, thanks. <laughs> I have a, um, an addition I'd like to add on this. I just give it to someone. Sure, that'd be great. Okay. Um, and then anything that, any changes or recommendations that you would like to make, they can be made between the first and the second reading. Um, we could call another policy subcommittee meeting, et cetera. We're going to okay. need one anyway to go through the wellness. We will eventually need one to go through the wellness, right? Okay. Yeah, so whatever. Bob or anyone else has any edits between now and the next time right. we meet. Just Absolutely. forward them along and we'll take them to the subcommittee meeting. Thank you. <coughs> so with these, Thanks. are we publishing this to the website so people know what the policy changes are, seeing that we're not reading them actually? The we have never read them. Um, we can post them as drafts. Um, if you like, these are not substantive changes. Um, so I mean, I normally wouldn't, but if you would like, we could certainly do that. Okay. Um, again, most of it is just adding the language pregnancy or pregnancy related, if you look through it. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you would like, we could certainly do that. Has there been a problem with that in any of the schools? My daughter, as you probably know, uh, had a baby when she was at Silver Lake, and she was she felt perfectly welcome there. Yes, no, there never has been. It's just this is just a um, part of our coordinated program review. It's just a requirement, a civil rights requirement. They're safe and sorry. Exactly, always. It applies to staff as well. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Okay. Thank you. Um, with, that, with that being said, who wants to do the... Uh, so we need a motion to waive the actual reading but accept the first reading and then somebody kindly needs to read all of these letters. Okay. <laughs> um. <coughs> Do you want me to read them all in my motion as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I make a motion that we waive the actual, actual reading, reading yep. and accept this first reading of policies AC, ACAB, ADF, EFD, GBA, GBEDD, GCF, IJND, ILD, JB, JFABE, JFABF, JFF, J-I-C-H and J-F-F again. Hmm. Thanks. That was a question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Was that the last one? Yeah, that was the same. Except for twice now. Where's J-F-F? J-F-F is a... J-J-F. Yeah, she doubled it. Sorry about that. But oh, this but is J-J-F. Not yeah. JFF so is the very last one. Oh, yes. Good catch. So I think it's just a typo. This one's yeah, JJF? Yeah. One's JJF one and the other's JFF. It was just a typo on your part. Oh, wait. Then it's a typo on here, too. No. 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 She just, at the top, it's a typo. And that says JJF. Oh, wait. She's right. She's right. It's a double typo. So is, no, but it's the same. It's the same policy. It's the same. It is the same policy. But it's JF as amended. JF. Yeah. Okay. So amend that J F F J F J F. And just once. And just once. Thank you. Sorry about that. Our office is really busy with budgets right now. Oh come on. I know. What do you got? Like four schools or something? I know. Five of them. What's up with that? We can talk. Do we have a second? <laughs> second. <laughs> second. Third. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> all right. All righty. Thank you. <clears throat> Negotiations has not met. Nope. Pat? They actually canceled the meeting this month. Okay. We haven't met since last week. Youth and Rec. That's me. They had a dance in December. It was very successful. Um, Holidays in Halifax also was fantastic. Dick Steele said, and he was very grateful for the help that he got from the principal and assistant principal in the building, doing everything they needed in the gym and so forth. Um, full on basketball mode in the gym right now. Um, they have town from, um, on Day of town from five to nine, and girls, and then boys is from five to ten on Mondays, I think, and then or boys is Friday, girls is Monday. Yeah, because Caroline's there today, so girls is Monday, boys is Friday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is practice from five to nine, and then Saturday and Sunday the travel teams are in there, so it's like booked solid in the gym. They're looking to do the floors sometimes over sometime over February vacation, I think he said. Um, and other than that, he said that there is a dance coming up on the 12th. They had to bump them to Saturdays now instead of Friday because of all the uh, basketball going on. And it's fifth and sixth grade. Um, Saturday night, the 12th, eight bucks at the door. Doors open at 6.30, music starts at seven. And that's it. PTO? PTO did not meet. They have a meeting January 18th at 9 a.m. Are you going to that one? I will be at that one. Capital budget, we didn't submit anything to nope. them, so we're good. That's solved. An admin review? I had no meeting. Union 31, no meeting. Um, with, according oh, to our calendar, we have one scheduled for February 14th, um, which is the same night, I know, sorry, the same night as the Silver I mean, Lake meeting. We love you. I know, <laughs> but <laughs> be my Valentine. <laughs> Um, so if uh, people are available, that was what was on the schedule, that was voted and approved, and we would meet at 5 o'clock at Silver Lake. Okay. That's me, and is that you too? Right now. Be, it'll be quick. So. Is that the high school? Yes. Trustee Binder. It shouldn't take long to take a look at budget. Oh, uh, share across. I got, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Okay. No, you need no, 31. Last year. No, I'm you, you know, 30. I only filled it when I was on. Oh. Um, Mr. Beaudry, you're up. Because I know we're talking about the budget tonight. So <clears throat> the enrollment is steady oh. at 609. So we had a couple of move ins from last month, uh, but also a history of the So we're staying steady at 609. Uh, an update for the playground. We're continuing talks with a company called Ultra Play. So we had him come out just preliminary to take a look at what we have down there and what our options were. So he sent that. us over um, some discounted uh, structures and different things that we could would be interested in looking at. Um, so we just kind of were back and forth a little bit about just design options. So he is putting together something for us to look at. And then we were going to work on having uh, our students kind of take a look at the different structures and the different designs that he's coming up with them for us. And we're going to take it step by step. So we're just in a waiting phase right now. It's what he can pull back with us. It's, it's where we're kind of still looking at our cost options because we're not sure because the structures he's looking at us are like last year's model. So he's great options and um, we're also talking about what are some of the things that we can do ourselves in terms of removing the sand the play structure that's there so similar to what I think he's doing with hops because I know that he was talking about how hops is community built where the community is doing a good portion of work so what we're going to do is we're going to his account for play structures that don't make touch that's kind of fun. Yeah, the kids will love that. See, there's a lot of cool structures he has, and we're just trying to see which one. Because each one would have different sizes and capacities and how many students can be on it at a recommended time. So there's lots of different options. It's neat. And we can custom design it if we want. No. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> Has anyone heard anything about this one, the part of the funded one? I think in the springtime, in March or April. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Good. Yes. And that's what I think it is. It's Joe McMahon, I think, was the person that uh, we got the name from the people that are doing hops. So I don't want to do another race. <laughs> okay. uh, so I believe they're moving out some of the structures that are there now and then working on removing the stone. And we've been talking with some of the people on how, because they were saying, because the town is moving the stone out, but they were discussing about where to put it. We were just spitballing. I mean, there's that access road that goes out to the back fields <laughs> that is a mud puddle. Mm. From the parking mm -hmm. lot here, it goes all the way. I, We don't have enough room to put that much stone. There's a lot of stone. <laughs> what about, like, isn't there a track that goes around the. Oh, there was a track? It's like a path, kind of? Around the building? Around. No, the around the, ba the baseball fields back here. I think, it's I, think a, I, think it's I think the problem, the big problem with it is in it moves. today's society is that that's like compacted stone dust for runners, so it's much it's a stronger, firmer base. Mm -hmm. And on a playground, they want like pea stone, so it's softer. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you can put that oh. one, because if you're running on it, you could roll an ankle, or it's a liability. Well, I don't know, okay. There's like those things all over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That too. that's yeah. a good point. I didn't think of that. I mean, back there, the access road, we don't have anything. We don't <laughs> plow back there. We don't have lawnmowers or anything, so, but it could help. Mm -hmm. It was an idea. Mm -hmm. And they offered it to us. And Scoops, but, uh, <laughs> 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 you know, fill, fill the bottom of your beta bowl there, can you? <laughs> 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 Bob, you're on camera, okay? 
I think they are, but um, with the cost of many, I do believe they the last year was the springtime. So for right. example, this is a Should be great. Except yeah. uh, Santa's <coughs> breakfast, I, I think like we mentioned, it's it's one of the biggest fundraisers that the PTO does for us and the weather was great, it's a great turnout. Um, we're excited to continue that tradition. The winter concert was on the 19th. We do one during the school day, and then we do one at nighttime. Brenda Lassar does everything from soup to nuts, and she is fantastic. We love the fact that she does it. She gets chorus and ball, and it's just, it's awesome. It's a great event. The she picks a name. Same this year. Every year she's got a theme now. What was the theme? I was there, too, and I don't even remember. But I did notice there were a lot more dancers this year, so which was kind of cool. And that, I believe, is from the students themselves. One year, I think there was a group of students that kind of took it upon themselves and said, hey, we have an act. Mm -hmm. So each year, it's come a little bit more. Yeah. Experience. Don't forget Mr. Howe's participation. In the, he's in the oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Howe. He's great. He's our in-house sound. <laughs> but he, he does a great job, so he's, and he does it for grad, Scott does it for graduation as well, so he's um, got a in, in the building sense, as he teaches expertise, but he also has some background music. Uh, the donations that we have, we have a, a bunch of donations that we uh, participate in during the season. One that we do is the, the giving tree that you see in the main <coughs> lobby. And uh, we have donated hats, pins, scarves. It's, it was over 150. We have to like keep track of the tree that like starts to lean over and fall <laughs> in the lobby. So, uh, and those donations go to the Plymouth Area for the Coalition for the Homeless. We also do uh, the, the staff here. They do a holiday um, donation to families. Kind of almost like adopt, adopt a family kind of. It's, we do this giving tree and it's all the names are anonymous, but they give us ideas and things that uh, we're really looking for. So that's always a huge success that people are looking for every year. And then the, I believe it's a Tri Town Masonic Lodge that goes and they pick up all these toys and they, it's fantastic. And we just wait for it every year. And he comes and he calls and he says, Toys are ready, come get them. We go and get them, we bring them back here, and then Claire, Helen, and Matt, they put them all together for the families that we are donating them to, and they come and they pick them up on the day before vacation. It's, it's great, great day. Yeah. Yeah. We do not wrap. We kind of just throw them back. <laughs> <It's, laughs> I mean, we, we organize and coordinate. Um, which families that we were working with and all the different benefits. So we kind of sort and organize in which ages and families. So that's how we do it. And Claire, the follow up does kind of taste drug for that. And <coughs> update on Windows 7 doors, it's chipping away. We did get some shades in here with the much needed from because of the sun that comes through. So that was. Uh, oh Bob please but uh, again we're just chipping away at the, um, <clears throat> the to do list at the end here and the doors uh, sometime in the end of January. did you guys have your meeting on the third oh, we did yes. you did okay um because I emailed Charlie for like a synopsis and um, he said it was sick it wasn't no. so I, I didn't know what so happened. An additional delay on the doors. And are they still coming on the 17th? Or are you gonna no, pop they're one? later. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> September, they said. Bother. Yeah. <laughs> Bite your tongue. Oh, August of 2018 or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well. So, so is the plan for February vacation? At this point? At this point. Wait, I mean, each time we just wait for the deliverer. Yeah. That's, the deliverer's there, we'll 
we'll do whatever. It was night, we were talking nighttime, we were talking weekends, whatever we need. We need the delivery, and then once we have the delivery, we'll also to finish the punch list. So we got an extension on the temporary. Um, it's too good about it. Yeah, so it's getting there, but it's um, don't hold your breath. <laughs> you don't look good in blue. Yep. Hmm. They are going out to bid on um, the sprinkler system. Oh, good. Yep. And they are doing a walkthrough or have done a walkthrough. No. I don't it's coming up. I don't remember what the date was. Soon. Um, but that's that is in process. Okay, that's good. Let's get it out nice and early. Yep. Absolutely. Is that it for you? Yeah. Um, we should probably do Christine, and then maybe we can swap the sure. budget. Yeah, in. should that get Linda get a chance to hear it? Well, I'm going to be brief. I just want to talk about the changes that have happened in our financial since last month. And really, the only changes are our homeless transportation has grown. We have a deficit now of just under two thousand dollars, and that's through December activity. So I expect that will continue to grow. And then we have one tutoring account, the special education area that has grown. We've had a, a unique situation with students that needs to be in place, so we're providing some tutoring until that happens. Other than that, there have been no real changes. Unless there are any questions. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> so happy to be here. Yep. That was pretty. Give us. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Let's time for the budget. budget. Yeah. All right. Um, so you have all of you have a yellow folder, and I just wanted to sort of go through and let you know what is in the yellow folder. Um, on the left side, and uh, Melinda also has a folder from the finance committee, and she's going to take the one back for selectmen. Um, so they also will have all the exact same information we all have. So on the left is basically information to support the budget, um, and it's basically reference material for you. Um, so you have the timeline that we gave out um, in uh, the fall, sort of going through how we build the process. You have Steve's tech um, plan that he pr presented to you for November, I believe it was. You have Melissa's budget uh, for the curriculum um, that she talked about in October, Melissa Farrell. You have Marie's special education presentation that went through the number of students we have that are out of district um, placements, et cetera. You have some graphs um, that's, that help you understand how we have changed over the years. Um, the first graph are the number of students over the last 10 years in Halifax. So you can see from 2009, we had 684 students in Halifax. And now in 2019, we have 608. So you can see we, we went down as low as 545, but we have been increasing again um, over the last few years. Um, and then you can see for grades 7 through 12, although I realize it may not impact Halifax as directly, it gives you a sense of um, where the numbers are for Halifax. And again, on the secondary level, Halifax went from 590 students in 09 down to 507 in 19. Um, so it just gives you, again, some idea of, of the students overall. Um, the second one was one that some people have asked a little bit about, is the number of students who choose homeschooling. Um, and I just thought it would be some interesting information for you. Um, and uh, again, right now, Halifax has um, six students who are currently homeschooled. Halifax ranges basically from a low of one um, up through, I think the highest we've ever had is eight. So it's, it's a little bit up and down. Some of it depends on um, families, and uh, it's a family's personal choice. And then you can see also homeschool enrollment for the secondary level. Um, and then the last page is just our planning for success, which is sort of what we are building our budget on, is, is our focus and our goals for the district as a whole. So that's all the information that's on the left side. Um, does anybody have any questions about that information? Again, that's really just sort of reference material, but having it all in one place mm. hopefully will make your life a little bit easier. Thank you. Just my goal. together. Yeah, yeah, no worries. No, it's, I understand that you're kind of limited in what you can share, and I appreciate you doing what you can for sure. it. Sure. 
Um, so on the right side is the meat of the budget, um, and that's the part that you're probably most interested in. Um, Kane put together um, a budget proposal, and um, we can sort of speak to that a little bit. Um, he used the brand new logo, which is really quite fun. I quite enjoy it. I have to say, it really, the kids did the kids did a great job designing that. I uh, quite like it. Um, so Kane talked a little bit about um, you know his priority and and the enrollment <coughs> um, and the focus. And I did just want to say right up front, I'm really proud of Kane. He did not ask for the laminating machine this year. He did a really good job. It was difficult. Poster, poster machine. machine. Poster machine. Yeah, he did not ask for the poster machine. It was tough, but he did get over himself there. Um, you can see the enrollment from 1819 through 1920. Um, again, our hope is to maintain the four teachers per grade level. Um, we have good class sizes in Halifax. Um, we're estimating that the kindergarten enrollment will be pretty close to what it is this year. Um, there is a, a bubble, um, which next year will be in second and third grade. Those classes, as you can see, are a little bit bigger. Um, but again, we still have pretty reasonable class sizes, and our hope is to just maintain that. Um, the one thing I did want to mention is in transportation, we are asking for an additional bus, and it is something that we would really like you to consider. It is not in the budget. Okay, I just want to stress that it is not in the budget because that is a separate issue that is above level service, which mm -hmm. is the town asked for us to present a level service budget. If we were to get an additional bus, the cost would be approximately $65,000 because it would not be a shared cost bus. What that means is we do not need an additional bus for Silver Lake. Do you need a pen? I have plenty. Okay. Um, we do not need an additional um, bus for Silver Lake, so it would only be used for Halifax. So you would have to pay the full cost of the bus. All of the elementary buses that we currently have are shared with Silver Lake, so Halifax only has to pay half the cost. All right, so if Halifax chose to purchase an additional bus, again, it's the full cost of a bus. So it's steep. Yes? Uh, would be able to use that bus for field trips and things? Um, if I believe, it's a great question, but I believe they always charge additional. When we pay for buses, we only pay for the runs. Okay. I've never, I, I don't know if we could try and cut a deal like that. I've never seen them be willing to do that, but I suppose. I it's yeah, no, it's a great idea. It's a great idea, but we don't have access to a bus all day. All we have it for is the two runs. Okay. And we do, we do use that for field trips. Mm -hmm. Well, We've always had to pay for additionally for field trips. Most field trips are two. Yeah. You can get it fit four classrooms for yep. kids usually, right? All right. Maybe 400? It's, it's, four, it's about 400, four, four to 600, yeah, a bus. Which is a good chunk of mm -hmm. like your tuition if you were to go somewhere because you're paying for plantation ticket uh, fee and then you're getting it for a bus. Um, so again, the cost is 65000 It is not in the budget. Again, because that is above level service, which is, you know, the town asked us to present level service. Um, technology, um, one of the things I did want to mention is, and I sent an email to Charlie today, is um, one of the things that we would like to ask for is a technology warrant article. Um, the switches in the building all need to be replaced. Steve had mentioned that when he was in here before. Um, so I, I did send Charlie today two warrant articles, and I'll talk a little bit more about that um, later. Um, but again, uh, the technology is just the usual amounts um, that we're asking for. On the budget, Steve did mention that um, if the town needs to take some cuts, we may be able to look at the REAP grant to um, sort of shave off some of the edges for technology when we get to that point um, as, as part of our budget building process. Um, the math program, uh, when Melissa Farrell came in, I think we talked a lot about um, that we are currently um, looking at different math programs. The math um, 
materials are being piloted by teachers throughout the district right now. We do not know which program will be decided upon. We have a placeholder in the budget of $73,000. Um, that would be the maximum amount. Hopefully it would be a little less than that, but that is a cost uh, factor. That is currently in the budget because we do have to have a math program. Um, and that would be um, something that you can purchase it for, and that would be a six year, um, they replace it every year, the workbook, so it's a six year program. Um, if we were to purchase it per year, it's incredibly more expensive, it's like sixteen ninety a year, so it, it's, it's a, a waste of money, the best and the most efficient way is to purchase it for the six year. I, I keep coming up with lease, but that's not the word I'm looking for. But subscription? There you go, that's better. <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking at new cars, so. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Can't get past the lease idea. Um, so um, that's, that's currently going on. We will know that before the budget is decided, but right now we're not at that point. Okay, uh, but again, the 73,000 is in the budget and that is more than a 1% increase in the budget, just so you understand. That's just the math books alone. Just the math books alone. So that is, when you see the, the budget, you'll notice that. Um, in Halifax, we have one known retirement of a teacher um, that is going out. Those savings have been built into the budget. Um, we also have the possibility of another one, but it isn't definitive and until I have that piece of paper mm -hmm. in my hand, I do not count it. Okay, um, obviously that would not be a good choice on my part <laughs> to take money out when we don't have the money there. Um, so again, came put at the bottom, the following items are not included, the additional bus. Um, we've talked about trying to do some upgrades in the bathroom. Um, that's not in, the, in here again. Um, the other item, and again, um, these are things that would be helpful to have. It's not that we can't run the school without them. We have a computer lab and we do not have air conditioning in there. Um, it is certainly harder on computers when they are not, you know, computers produce a lot of heat. Um, so it would certainly be helpful if that room was air conditioned. Um, but again, that is not something that I would consider life threatening. If, if we had to make decisions, the bus would certainly be one I think mm. that the parents would be more appreciative of. <coughs> Excuse me. And then Kane just has the. Pardon me? We just moved a chunk of our network into the computer. Right. It used to be in the custodian's office for some reason. Yeah, we have no uh, idea why. So we moved up all the wires and things to the computer lab. So it's the computer lab it's Got some network in it. Um, and then we have the capital plan and we just highlighted in yellow the things that are done. Um, so now for the actual budget. So the first set of papers, the ones that is smaller, are the summaries um, of all the different lines. Um, at this point, we have not had a chance yet to update my office. Um, so you'll see the shared cost. Those numbers are not updated yet. Um, once those are updated, those will be put in. We just carried forward the numbers that were in last year. So there will be some slight increases in those areas. Um, oftentimes, you know, Halifax is first on the docket, so we, it, there's lots of moving pieces happening simultaneously, but we don't have a final number there yet. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we don't have any buybacks this year. You may remember last year we had a teacher buyback. That was an extra um, 23-ish thousand mm. dollars. Um, so that was helpful that we don't have that this year. Um, we do have two teachers who are receiving longevity. Um, mm -hmm. That's only, about, it's about 3,000 a teacher that's uh, in there. Um, we have no rental income. You may remember I have mentioned that PAC will be moving out. Um, so we don't have that 11,137. You'll see that about three quarters of the way down the page that that is not carried forward for this year. Um, so we have that loss of income. We were taking that off um, this year. Um, I already mentioned the math textbooks and that putting that math textbooks in is adding over 1% into the budget in terms of our increase. Um, the bus is not included. Um, and I just wanted to mention that circuit breaker we put in at 60% reimbursement, okay? So if you go to the end page, um, which if you just flip over the first part, the grand total um, for a regular day is a 4.35% increase. Again, over 1% of that increase is the math textbooks, okay? Um, last year's budget was 5, 4, 
22, so about a $54,000 increase would be 1%. The, tech, the math textbooks are 73. So that's a good portion of your increase. So if you took the math textbooks off, um, it's just over a 3% increase. I think we were what, two? Does that make sense? Two and a half last year? Um, the Roughly increase last year? Mm -hmm. Last year was. Uh, we don't need actual, I'm just thinking. Something I think it started at four and yeah. we whittled it down to like right. two something. Yep. The town last year asked us to take pretty substantial cuts, which we did. Yes. Um, so if you take out the math textbooks, we're actually in better shape. Yes, exactly. At the start this year than we were last, last year. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so again, we're, we're very good. Positive for um, and for special education, I wanted um, you to notice, um, and that's again the second page one at the top. Um, special ed education transportation, as Marie has mentioned, we have struggled a little bit. Um, our main provider was bought by another company. Um, we are still working our way through um, the dependability of that. Um, <clears throat> so that's where the majority of the increases are. Our actual special ed trans, uh, tuition is up, um, relatively speaking, a small amount, only $32,000. Mm. So that's um, really good news. Um, again, we, the way Marie has been building the programs, we've been able to keep the cost down. We've been able to keep more students in district. Um, so that increase is good. It's only a 1.76 increase. Uh, vocational education, um, at this point, um, again, just to remind everyone, students can apply through April 1st, and we do not have any known students applying. We would anticipate we would get a couple. But at this point, that number has just been carried forward. So that does not include spaces for any potential additional students. I just said we do have three students <coughs> graduating. One has withdrawn and the other two are graduating. So well, we already know of two filled, though. Correct. I'm just saying that's the So somebody was asking me about this today. Um, we have a set number of slots that we can offer our students, or if they want to go to a program at the South Shore of Oak Tech and we do not offer it Silver Lake, we are obligated to send them to that program? If they get accepted. If they get accepted. After ninth grade. Okay. So there's not, like, a cap on the nope. number of students. There's Interesting. A, there's a cap for the schools that they have. Like social tech doesn't have to have the students in. They, they don't have to. They're accepted. But that's what they're <coughs> yeah, <coughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's not on our end. It's on their end. So exactly. Somebody yeah. was telling me. I don't know if this is accurate. That Whitman Hansen can take 16 of 16 students. Give the Vogue Tech 16 students. So it's eight from Hansen, eight from Whitman, and they're like, how many does Halifax slots does Halifax have? And I go. Well, That's I think well. Women well, it's is a, a member district. Part of South Shore Regional, so, so it's educational, so they pay an assessment. Yeah. So maybe the assessment's based on that a lot. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so it's just a whole different. Yeah, yeah. they're okay. a member. You they're a member district. Twenty thirty kids. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. At least. And there's a big push in state to send students to vote tech programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Whitman High School doesn't really offer. Well, that was part of the conversation. Right. Yeah. We offer a lot at Silver Lake right. that they don't yeah. offer at Whitman Hanson. No. Right. So, okay. Mm -hmm. I was just curious. Yeah. 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 And the comments made at the finance committee with the selectmen was to keep the number as we have proposed here. Yeah. Just so that for vocational the school. Yeah. Yeah. Where, uh, yeah. it, for terms, in terms of the budget. Making the budget. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got it. Um, so again, this is your summary, um, which goes through the three different areas the way the town votes it. So it's regular day, um, special education, which is the out of district and the transportation, and then vocational. Those are our three votes. Um, so the next packet that you have is the expenditure by function. Um, I'm not sure how you would like to proceed if you'd like to to take some time to digest this. Um, I don't know if the Finance Committee has any information. I know you need to go in a minute. If there's any information you can share with us, or? We actually have this next sentence, the Bill December, so the next to be our first meeting. Okay. A few weeks, so um, we'll do some basic housekeeping stuff today, I think, and then we'll start scheduling it, folks, so we'll definitely let everyone know well in advance we're gonna talk about your budget, um, and invite you to come in and talk about it with Great. us. And I'll be your liaison. Um, so I'll be in touch as well. Okay. I can't come another six comment, but we'll come in place. 
Okay. Thank you, Melinda. No problem. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Just before we leave, Silver Lake meeting. Silver Lake is Thursday night, Melinda. Okay. If you're available at six o'clock at the high school. Okay. I should be able to come for a little bit, but I have to engage the personnel that night too. I think. Okay. We're going to move the budget right up to the beginning okay. after a couple short We're things. We're trying to make two, uh, like a backup for each of us for these bigger okay. items. So if I can't be there, then Bill or um, Fred can be there. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. What's the committee's pleasure? I think in the past we've sort of taken a minute to look at every page and then sort of do it that way rather than yep, you know go through every single line. Mm -hmm. But if there's a line on the page that jumps out to anybody and they want to talk about it, now would be the best time to start dissecting it. So can I make a recommendation that we hold off until we have some updated shared cost information? For the pa for page to, one or for go, the entire? To go through the whole thing. So what would you like to, what, what is your recommendation what we do tonight? We just digest, bring it home and digest it? I think everyone should look through it and then come back with questions. I don't think it makes sense to go through line by line tonight <clears throat> because we're going to have to do the same thing in Again. February and then we're going to have to do the same thing in March when we get an idea of what's going on with the Silver Lake budget and what's happening with mm -hmm. all the other town budgets. Okay. Because if we go through and we start, you know, Looking at everything right now, we're going to have more questions and going to have to look deeper inside the budget. Okay. The next two meetings. Well, how about this? I'm, I'm with you, but I think if there's anything that stands out to anybody right now that's had a chance to kind of comb through this a little bit, that sure. it wouldn't hurt to ask a few questions now. And then um, I agree with you, though, because if we're going to start moving things around, it doesn't make sense if we have empty spaces, you know? Because we have zeros in there for some items right now, and we know that's not right. it's true. it's again our zero increase. Yeah. Oh, right. We do carry over the nineteen. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. As a placeholder. Yeah. All right. So let's give ourselves just a couple minutes to kind of go through. If anything jumps out to anybody, we can talk about it, and then if not, we can take it home, digest it, pick through it, come back and talk about it some more next month. Because next month is our public budget hearing, correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. Just let them look at it. That's an influence of it. What they've done is they've taken a look at their current conditions and added a percent on top of that. So it's based on what's happening right now. Okay. With the current student population? Correct. Yeah. Why did um, the electricity allowance go down by $10,000? I decreased electricity because in the FY19 budget, I included a factor for that additional charge we're paying for the mm -hmm. town. And that's, that's the, coming the, off. The, the town, as of June, paid that off. Oh, great. So it's not in our electric bill anymore. And I looked at our year to date. When we do a really good we're creating the budget for utilities, we look at year to date actual, and it's backfilled with the prior year's actual to see. And then if there are any other changes, do we have a new gas contract, a new electric contract? So I believe we could reduce about ten thousand dollars and Great. still be comfortable. That was the green. Yes. Changes that wasn't yeah. supposed to cost us. That was the one. Mm. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, 
I know from sitting at that end of the room before. The, mm -hmm. the first pass. So. It, it's mm -hmm. the first pass. Um, I believe it's a, a very reasonable first pass. Um, again, if you take the math textbooks out, the percentage increases. And that's been explained for the last three years. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> no, I, no, I appreciate that. <laughs> that somebody listened. Um, so, you know, again, that we knew that was coming, um, you know, and, and I, I don't believe there's anything unreasonable in this budget. Um, you know, I think it's a, a, a very fair budget. You know, I don't know what the situation of the town will be, but um, I think it's, it's a very, um, you know, it's level service again. Um, the only thing that is not in here is that bus which is sort of a community discussion point, I guess, um, to be decided. So just for the regular day and the special ed increases, we're looking at, uh, that's the grand total. And, uh, the grand total includes the special. The, the grand total. No. Which? The very end. The, the two page. That is does not include out of district special education, out of district education. So that's everything within this building. So the so it's a two hundred and thirty six thousand O twenty three increase. And then the special ed is a hundred and twenty six thousand seven sixty three. And then vocational is flat. So it's three hundred and sixty two thousand seven hundred and eighty six. That sounds about right. So the just so everyone's aware Prop two and a half is approximately four hundred thousand. So we are going to get pushback on the budget. Absolutely. Prop two and a half is four hundred, you said? Prop two and a half is four hundred. And what is our number? Two three sixty seven. Ooh. Is that what you said? Three sixty two is the total increase. Three hundred and sixty two thousand. So we are, we are gonna get pushback mm -hmm. on that. But I mean, with, a, with 126, almost 127 special ed that you have no control. I, I mean, it is. Right. Moving, but there's really no. Right. And again, this is, you know, and I, and I know you know this, but just for the community, um, the numbers are, as of this moment, you know, special education yep. evolves. Um, what we did, as Christine explained, with the two, special ed transportation, which is where the majority of the increase is, is we added a percentage increase based on what we have. You know, if we're lucky over the next couple months, hopefully we'll have a better sense of what a real number is um, for that. But um, the number that the numbers that we have in the actual ad district tuition, which have been the main concern of the towns, that is a very low increase. And I think it really speaks to the work that we've done developing in-house programs. The only one question I had about the special ed budget was with the collaborative leaving the space. Yep. Is there ability to try to service some more students in this building with a different program? Um, w there are other collaboratives. We could see if they were interested in renting space. Um, and we're also always looking at whether or not we need to develop additional programs. Okay. So, I mean, it, it's a great room. As a matter of fact, I think it's a lot nicer than my office. <laughs> I keep a really good eye on you. So, <laughs> I might be moving in. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, it's, it's a great room. I mean, it, it truly is. It's it's a wonderful room. I mean, it's big. It's sunny. It's got a bathroom. It's a, it's an absolute great room. So, but um, you know, to Gordon's point, I think it's it's important to kind of always keep that on our radar. Absolutely, especially even just sending kids to Kingston. That's a transportation cost. Yep. If we can keep them here. Yep. Absolutely. I think even um, you know. One might argue, without looking at the raw numbers, that you know, hiring a, an extra body to be in the building and be in that space and service our children here, not only financially but for the benefit of the students, mm -hmm. could be you know a plus all around. Right. Yep. I think. Yep. We, Marie does a really nice job of keeping everything on the radar, so it isn't that we haven't thought of it. But it's always good to see other people think the same way. Um. 
Remember you brought to us last year, maybe the year before, the idea of a stabilization for special education? Mm -hmm. Do the other t towns in our district have it? Does Silver Lake, Dennett, and Kingston, did they approve that, or are we the only town that does not have that? Um, Silver Lake doesn't have it because oh, right. they, they do the out-district tuition, but Kingston <clears throat> voted it and Dennett voted it. Okay. So Halifax is the only town that did not vote it. Were you and were you two on the committee when we had that conversation? I don't think I think that was you before me. So, do you want to briefly just mention it? Sure. Do you, do you just very to briefly, like, the <laughs> idea of it, just just Shh. to have the conversation okay. about it. I think the promise is to have a stabilization fund for those times when events happen that are beyond your control, and that would really just create create havoc with your budget. So it gives you the opportunity to have some funds set aside in that to be used by the, by the, by the school department, by the town if needed. Um, but you would have to fund that amount, and there are limitations on how much you can fund that. It can't be more than 5% of your budget. Mm -hmm. um, and what happens is you have to have it listed in your budget. So we would need to put a line in that says Special Education Stabilization Fund. We could just put in $1,000, say, just to have a line item there. Then at the end of the year, school committees have line item autonomy. So if we didn't expend the whole budget, rather than return it to the town, you could put it in the special ed stabilization fund, which is sort of like, as Christine said, in case something went really wrong. Um, the town of Halifax has always been very supportive of, of our budget and understanding of special education. Their feeling was they'd rather get the money back to be able to use it and that if we need it, they will provide us with what is needed for the students. How'd I do? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Okay. The other thing I'm wondering, though, is is um, you said like use it in an emergency, right. but could we use it to fund this transportation increase because it's part of special ed, or does it have to be like all of a sudden we have this outrageous expense? Or I I don't know what the parameters are on what makes it a you know, crisis or emergency. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. But in order to access it, you need a vote oh. from the school committee and, and a vote from the select selecting. Board. Correct. Yep. It doesn't have to go before a town meeting. Once the fund is established, the selectmen and school committee would work to win to access it. So if we had a year that the town was having a hard time, mm -hmm. transportation went up, I believe that would be a reasonable request, but I, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared. I believe that no, would be I just, true. No, it just popped yep. out of my head. I was just yep. thinking about it again. Um, but it's, you know, again, I... I, I think Kingston and, and Dennett both felt confident. I mean, I, you know, not that they haven't always been supportive also, mm -hmm. but I think they like the concept of having that sort of safety net yeah. um, there. So that's, you know, it is in both of those budgets. But, um, you know, and, and again, you know, each town chooses to do things differently. But um, I personally think it's a great idea, you know, but, but again, I probably always want to make sure, I, you know, I can pay my bills. So <laughs> details. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, if if you want at this point, you can take some time and look through this. Um, I don't disagree that we'll probably need to make some budget cuts. Um, I guess my question to you is, do you want to give us some sense of a number, and we could sort of go back and look at some things? Do you want to wait until we get more feedback from the town um, and see where we go from there? I think I'd, I'd personally, I'd rather wait to get more feedback from the town. That works for me. I'd, Pretty happy with that idea. I, just to Gordon's point, that I don't want to have a conversation and have the same conversation next mm -hmm. month. With okay. I mean, I've been through the, the budget cycle for eight or nine years. And Go for this guy. And it, well, I mean, it no, I just know. it comes down to you have to make the budget work come yep. March. So making changes now yep. doesn't make sense because you don't know what the numbers are. Right. Yep. Exactly. Last year in November, we thought everything was going to be. Dory, and then yeah. the numbers came in, and the sky was falling from February to the middle of March. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we, we made cuts here, we had town meeting, and then there was a special town meeting, and there was no issue with money, so um, I don't think that we, we should, should be, be doing cut crazy until we have some real firm data on what's going on with the rest of the departments. Okay. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Um, again, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to Christine, myself, um, Kane, um, with anything that's there. But hopefully, this will—you'll view this as a, a thorough packet. Um, I think it, yeah, it has everything great. in it that you need. 
Um, I really want to thank Kane and Brian. Um, we had lots of uh, meetings um, beforehand. We already, you know, have uh, gone through this several times, and um, they, I thought they did a great job putting everything together. Um, if I could, I just wanted to mention the Warren articles. I started oh, talking yes. a little bit about that. Um, so this is what I put together today, and I'm sure Charlie will clean it up um, for me, but he, he did ask for them um, to be to him by today. So the first Warren article I put together was to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds the sum of $16,000 to replace, replace Halifax Elementary School network switches or take any action thereon. And that would be proposed by you, the school committee. Okay, so again, it's just replacing the switches in our building. In terms of information, with the exception of two switches, we had to replace due to failure. They are all seven years or older and are end of life and are no longer supported. The total cost of this project is approximately $32,000, and we have applied for E-rate funding, which should cover 50% of the cost, um, which would bring the request to 16000 So we've already applied for the E-rate funding with the hope that the town would support the Warren article for 16,000. We do not believe switches would be covered under the REAP grant, uh, just in case anybody, that's considered um, internal. It's, I don't know, wiring? I don't know what you call it, but whatever no. it is, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the next article um, would be for funding a part-time school resource officer for Silver Lake Middle School. That is not necessarily directly impacting the school committee, but here, but it will be for Silver Lake. And I just wanted you to be aware of it because the kids here all go up to the school. Um, so just in terms of information before I present the article. Um, so the town of Kingston funded a part-time, half-time school resource officer for, for four years, completely out of the Kingston Police Department budget. This year, they fully funded a school resource officer out of the Kingston Police Department budget. Okay. Now, obviously, that police officer does not just work with Kingston students, so they're helping and, and securing the building for all students um, within the building. Um, the school committee has really tried to focus on safety and security, as all the school committees have in all of the buildings. Um, right now, we have a full-time officer, but they're trying to cover the high school, which has about mm, close to 1,200 kids, and the middle school, which has about 540. That's a, that's a lot of building and a lot of students for one full-time officer. And again, before that, we only had half time. So what we'd like to do is to have the person we have, um, Officer Allen, be just stationed at the high school and get a half-time officer for the middle school. Okay, that's what the article is for. That's what we'd like to bring forward. Um, I've been working with the police chiefs. They're all very supportive. Your new police chief is great, by the way. Seems like a really good guy. Um, and um, it would be outside of any of the school's budgets. This would be um, an intermunicipal agreement between Halifax, Plimpton, and the Kingston Police Department. It would be totally outside of the school budgets. We don't pay for them. They're not my officers. They're not my people. <laughs> so uh, is Plimpton going to pay the other half? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, Plimpton was seemed amenable to it. So well, I mean, I have been to town meeting. That, yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, so the idea is it would be fifty thousand dollars for the part-time officer. Um, it's all based on overtime. It's not their full-time job. That's how it had been funded for four years. Okay. Because otherwise, they'd have to try to hire a whole officer. And the problem is, is if the town's backed out or if something happened, what's Kingston supposed to do with this police officer they've hired? So by doing it part-time, overtime, that works better for the police department to sort of make sure this is going to work. Um, so the idea of this is um, that you, we would develop an intermunicipal agreement and the financial split would be based on student enrollment. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's $50,000 total. Total. So, um, chatting with Charlie, mathematically, I was originally saying 30-20. Looks like it would probably be more 36-14. So, um, the, the actual wording, and this is just my attempt, by the way, and I know this will be corrected, um, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate or transfer from available sums the sum of $36,000 to support a part-time school resource officer for the Silver Lake Middle School or take any action thereon. And again, that would be proposed by Silver Lake. Yep. Question. So, 
So the officer was going to be assigned during the entire time the school was open? Um, for the hours that are considered part-time. It's not... Well, like 30 hours a week? Probably closer to 20. Okay. And that's... Is it going to be rotating officers? No. We would like just one person so that they can develop a relationship with the kids. That's how we had the one for four years. It was the same no, person for four years. That's what I'm saying, but that's not going to cause a mutiny with the police department. No. No, they, they sort of posted as a position, and it was called a school liaison because it's outside of the union contract. A school resource officer is defined within their contract. Mm -hmm. A school liaison is not. Really? Yes, it's, it's sort of an outside the contract. Yeah. It, it, we had somebody who was there for four years. He did a great job, Officer Marshall. I don't know if you ever met him or not. Just a great guy. Um, but when it became a full-time position, he, he didn't want that. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, again, that's not a Halifax article that would be brought forward by Silver Lake. I actually will need a Halifax Silver Lake person to bring that up. Um, but I, I just not wanted much. you to be aware that I have sent two warrant articles to Charlie, and they were due today. Okay. Um, and then, did I have anything else? I don't remember. Uh, the building project we talked about. Yeah. Next, it's next happening. June. <laughs> yeah, next June. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. Did um, I forget anything, by the way? Yeah. This goes yeah. that way. Highlights? Okay. <laughs> So, okay, Ms. Pro. So the wellness committee uh, reviewed the wellness policy. Um, and uh, as Superintendent Blackwood mentioned, we'll be um, looking into uh, whether or not it will have an impact on um, the, the scoreboard um, and in terms of the plans for marketing in that way. Um, we will be offering a second on-campus sheltered English immersion endorsement class for faculty, and that will be starting on January 15th. That's the first one. Very good. Isn't great? Isn't Lana great? <laughs> I know. I really love Lana. She's so much fun. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> we appreciate her willingness to serve as the instructor because it's yeah. really been uh, wonderful for our faculty. It's, it's a huge. Yeah. It's like 30 less than that. It's a lot of work Job. Yeah. Um, representatives from each of our schools attended the social thinking conference and um, educators focused on social learning challenges that students face and strategies to help students communicate more effectively, socially problem solve, and ultimately build relationships. Um, I consulted with Melissa Farrell and Melissa Fontaine uh, regarding their needs in terms of incorporating the new uh, history uh, and civics standards and uh, applied for a grant. It's a competitive grant for $10,000 that would allow us to have up to 26 teachers working and uh, participating in understanding by design uh, lesson planning to help develop a scope and sequence to further influence lesson plan design. Uh, we are not a high needs district, so our chances are not um, particularly good, but we applied anyways because you never know. And so uh, we're, we're hopeful uh, and regardless, we have begun plans for how we're going to um, begin to integrate the new standards. Uh, but this grant certainly would help us to really push forward in a, in a big way to get the project started. Um, and um, we have Right now, our PD Council, our Wellness Council, and our administrative team all working together to help plan our February Professional Development Day. Our plan is to have a common presentation for uh, grade level groups to work across the district on that day to provide a wellness opportunity and then provide time for teachers to take what they learned in their morning session to incorporate self-awareness and self-management strategies into existing lesson plans. So that's our February plan that we're working on right now. Thank you. Any questions? That's all you have for us? That's it today. <laughs> Thank you. Are we done? I think we are. I think of that. Well, I mean, for our regular meeting. Yeah. Well, officially. Yeah. For those tuning in at home. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we need a motion to adjourn regular session to open executive session only to return to regular session to adjourn the meeting. 
Did I say that sense. right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> Nailing it today. <laughs> okay. Now you gotta do it. <laughs> Stealing my thunder, Gordon. I was doing so good. <laughs> okay. Mr. Johnson? So moved. No, it's already been moved. <laughs> <laughs> Just say aye. Allison? Yes, aye. Gordon? Yes. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you.